trouble with bullets is that they're rather fast, so when you start shooting and you hear about the arc of fire or windage, it's something you have to take on trust. Well, Tim of the Pillbeam likes nothing more than testing and tinkering with bullets and bolt actions, and when the UK was blown about a bit last week, he thought it would be the perfect opportunity to demonstrate stuff like how a bullet deviates in flight. But first, we have a ping pong ball. We'll chase after it. There, that proves it's windy. So sprightly for a man in his 60s. We're in sunny Sussex. It's very, very windy today. The wind meter telling me it's, it's between 20 and 30 miles an hour. 30 mile an hour is a lot of wind, uh, especially for, for the hunter. So hopefully today we can just demonstrate how much wind drift we can get from shooting an animal sized target. We're going to be shooting between 200 and 300 yards away, which is plenty far enough. I think most people wouldn't even think about shooting an animal at that distance in this wind. We're just trying to show practically how a bullet actually can move off target. And if we can just show people that you know you have to allow for wind, and sometimes, well, we, perhaps today we'll find out if we over allow or under allow for wind. I know exactly what I do, but um, I think it's the thing we've got to be very, very aware of that you get a big gust coming through. There's a gust coming through at the moment, it's about 30 miles an hour. That's going to push a bullet quite a long way. So let's have a play. Let's just see what we can do in windy conditions, and we may all learn something. So what about these bullets? To demonstrate uh, wind drift, we thought we'd use some tracers. Um, standard military tracers. Um, I think they're about 150 odd grains. We're using 308. And this is what goes through machine guns, or uh, that's what the military use. Uh, most tracers light up around about the 150 to 200 yard mark, so it's be quite tricky to see it. But we're rather hoping that the last 100 metres we're to see that arc of fire. One thing to be wary of is that tracers are not the most accurate of bullets. So if we can just demonstrate how much that tracer, how much the bullet is actually moving because of the wind, we've done our job today. Here's some stuff we discovered on Tinternet. Tracers are commonplace in warfare and were used in the First and Second World Wars. They make it easier for machine gunners to find their targets. They're designed to ignite 150 or so yards out so as not to blind the shooter. Tracers make it more likely for a target to explode. Of course, we are purely using these bullets as a visual aid. For Tim's first shot, he's going to shoot directly at the vital zone on this row steel target. The high-speed camera picks up the impact. Here we can see that the tracer lands nowhere near it. The ballistic data shows a two-foot drift in 30 mile an hour winds at 300 yards for the 308 hunting round, but stronger gusts near the target could push the bullet much further. Tim now compensates for the wind and aims off. This time he hits the mark, which by his own admission has surprised him. That's very, very interesting. So I allowed two foot in front of the, the row target, and uh, fortunately today I managed to get two, two shots within about three inches of each other in this wind, so therefore the wind's fairly consistent. I, from my personal experience, I always over allow for, for, for wind. So it's just a thing to consider sometimes is, is that go out, practice, and see how much wind deflection there is, you know, all depending on what ammunition you use. Heavier the ammunition, generally they're a bit more stable. You start shooting the, the lighter ammunition, the 75 grain Foxing 243 bullets, and you'll find actually sometimes they do deviate quite a bit, but sometimes I found that the faster the bullet, i.e. the smaller rounds, sometimes out to about two or 300 yards, they hardly move a, a thing. So it's, the point is, get out there in conditions like this, safely practice with a decent backstop and see what happens to your bullets. It's, it's very, very good practice. With only a few tracers left, Tim wants to shoot at a steel fox target 500 yards away. We hope we will be able to see the bullet drop. The wind's actually coming from over here somewhere, about one, say two, between one and two o'clock. It's still blowing my bullet quite a far way over, which is quite interesting. So you can see the bullet dropping 50 odd, 55 inches, and also it's, it's been blown across the valley here by about uh, two foot. Uh, this is very, very interesting. It's just lovely to see that path, that bullet going down, down to the, the backstop. So just an interesting visual experiment to demonstrate uh, how the tracer works. 
So just a reminder, this isn't science, it's just an illustration that shooting practice in all conditions is a good thing to do, but know your limits and guesswork has no place when shooting quarry.